our guest of today's event is Excellency Ganesh Prasad Dhakal, scholars of Kuala University, and the University of Bangkok and other parts of Thailand. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning from Thailand. Uh, welcome to a special lecture on Nepal-Thailand relations, uh, which is being organized by South Asian Studies Center, Institute of Asian Studies of Kuala University. Uh, we all know that South Asian Studies is the research unit of Kuala University founded in 2017 under the Institute of Asian Studies that conducts research on South Asian Studies countries with social, economic, cultural, and political aspects. Uh, we all are aware that Nepal and Kingdom of Thailand enjoys traditional relations that are marked by friendship, understanding, and cooperation since the establishment of the Kuala in 1959. Both the countries are members of Bimstead and have an important role to play uh, for regional cooperation. In this context, uh, we have invited His Excellency Ganesh Prasad Thakkar, Nepalese, uh, Nepali ambassador to Thailand, to speak on Nepal and Thailand relation. Excellency, we are really privileged to have you with us today. Uh, we could not think of someone better than you to speak on this important topic which we have been dealing since uh, years. Uh, thank you for your time, and I, on behalf of Center and my own, uh, would like to welcome you to our Center at Sulawak University. Before I start, let me briefly introduce His Excellency Ganesh Prasad Hakkar. His Excellency Ganesh Prasad Hakkar is the Ambassador of Nepal to Kingdom of Thailand and Dr. Sardin Adhiman, President Ambassador of Nepal to Laos, India. He had a distinguished career as a diplomat. Ambassador Hakkar was a permanent representative to the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific. He also served as the Director General of the Department of Council Services, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Nepal. He was the Joint Secretary and Head of North East Asia Division of Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Nepal and served as Joint Secretary and Head of Central Asia, West Asia and Africa Division. And Mr. Dhakal joined the Ministry of as a Section Official in 1996. Excellency, you have around 20 to 30, 35 minutes to dwell on Nepal Thailand relations, where you may highlight uh, how the relations between the two countries have evolved, uh, how are the economic and political aspects, uh, what are the prospects in promoting tourism between the two countries, and what role can Bimstead play and both the country have to get on with I once again welcome you at today's event uh, and over to you. Thank you. Yeah, good. good morning. Good morning. Namaste Savadika. Thank you very much for this opportunity to deliver and share my views on Nepal Thailand relations. First of all, I would like to recognize the Director of South Asian Studies Center, Institute of Asian Studies of Sulawakan University, Dr. Zirayu. Uh, and the distinguished uh, scholars and uh, our colleague uh, from Nepal, Dr. Prabhu Deshwal. It was actually a distinct honor and uh, uh, pleasure to have this uh, opportunity to share my views on bi our bilateral relationship in front of such a distinguished illuminari in uh, your field. Uh. So this is a very distinct um, experience that I am having. Uh, with these words, um, I, since this is an academic uh, forum, academic ground, so please consider this as personal this, uh, views, not the, the, it doesn't relate to the, uh, the, the official. But uh, anyway, uh, the, since I am personal, I mean I am official, representative of Nepal, so of course so you expect some in-depth um, ideas or views on our pilot relationship. Uh, with these uh, um, uh, remarks uh, in the outset, I would like to um, share my views through my presentation, uh, the PowerPoint presentation. And this presentation has a little bit So my presentation uh, outline Oh, oh, yes. Okay. 
so outline of my presentation is starting from my status of violent relations, diplomatic and political relations, historical and cultural linkages, bilateral mechanism, bilateral agreements, major agreements, areas of bilateral cooperation, Nepal and Pinstek, and in a nutshell, and the question and, and the answer session. So this this uh, this is the outline of my presentation. So let's begin with the status of current pilot relations. Our pilot relations between two countries. So Nepal always it has great importance to its relation with Thailand. Our pilot relations are always friendly, uh, traditional and historic, marked by friendship, cordiality and cooperation, exchange of high-level visits on various occasions have further extended these ties. Two countries have growing people-to-people -people contacts and both countries have been cooperating to each other in many regional and international forums on matters of common concerns. So this is the just synopsis and summary of our pilot project relations. So with these words, I would like to move to another uh, uh, area that is diplomatic and political relations. So bilateral relations were formalized by the establishment of diplomatic ties in 1959. And government has appointed honorary consul general in Phuket. So we have two diplomatic representation in Thailand, that is Embassy of Nepal in Bangkok and the Honorary Consulate General in Phuket. Both the countries, our two countries, are member of Bimstek and Nam and also supporter of multilateralism. The two countries have exchanged high-level visits at different times, which is in our history. And it is noted that all visits exchange of high level have their own significance at that time and is still now. The visits of royal family members to Nepal on various occasions have remained significant in our bilateral ties. There are so many high royal family members have visited to Nepal on different occasions and different times. So in recently, the right honorable president Vidyadi Vandari visited Thailand in May 2017 and pay tribute to His Majesty Lake King Gomibol Adelia Dej. And the most recently Prime Minister His Excellency General Fuiz Rocha visited Nepal to attend the fourth Bimstek Summit held in Kathmandu in August 2018. So these are the major uh, exchange of high level visits as well as our formal relationship from 1959 now. So let's go back to our historic and cultural linkages. Our relations actually formalized in 1959, but uh, we have the history of people to people for contacts for more than 2000 years. So there is another interesting um, book um, you might have known that it means the late King Rama 9. King uh, has written one book that is titled The Story of Maha Jalaka. It is a carbon edition which reflects ancient linkages between the two countries. This book, Maha Janak, you might have known. That time, in ancient time, it was ruled, he ruled from Vidya, and that area, that region falls in Nepal. That is called Janakpur and Mithila region right now and we actually we both of us represent from that region so this is very important ancient linkages that uh, we have between our two countries so another interesting and important factor is teaching of Gautam Buddha and philosophy of Buddhism are a strong binding threads between the peoples of our two countries the two countries have many similarities in terms of religion, culture, tradition, and language. We, we, you might have noticed, 
since you are distinguished scholars and studying on South Asia, we have some words common between Nepali and Thai, Thai which are derived from Pali Sanskrit. So whenever I heard the uh, words from Sanskrit, I understand the meaning. So that is very unique between our two countries. Another important fact is that Thai government has built a very beautiful monastery in Rumini, which is very good symbol of our friendship in our two countries. And another linkage is people-to-people -people contacts. Majority of Thai visitors to Nepal, they go to pay homage to the birthplace of Lord Gautam Buddha, that is Lumini. So this shows how ancient, how traditional, how uh, old our relationships are between our two countries. So this is the picture, just to, I think you might have already visited some of you and in those who have not been to uh, this place. So first one is Lumini, the birthplace of Gautam Buddha. And the second one is Kapilabastu, Tilavraka. It is 35 km west of Rumini. And it is uh, the very ancient place. Where it is the hometown of Gautama Buddha, parental hometown. So this is another important, and it is temporarily in the UNESCO, uh, temporary, uh, temporarily listed in UNESCO record in this site as well. But uh, Lumbini itself is already right now in the world heritage site, but Kapila was the Tilora code is also in temporary world heritage site. That's why, so these two uh, pictures I have uh, reflected here in front of you. So we do have bilateral mechanism, which is very important and crucial in promoting, expanding, and uh, um, furthering and strengthening our bilateral ties. That is joint commission at the permanent secretary and we say foreign secretary level between two foreign ministry of the two countries it is it was established 1986 84 so jc which is short form of joint commission is the only forum where the two countries could exchange views on entire aspects of our private relations including regional and global issues of common concerns and explore the areas of bilateral cooperation on mutual, for mutual benefit. So last uh, Joint Commission meeting was held uh, just last year through video conference because of COVID. So this, uh, this trend will continue because this is the forum it's, uh, where our two sides exchange views. So this is important forum in our bilateral relations. So I have highlighted three important agreements in three different areas. One is air service agreement, which connects uh, air connectivity, which promotes air connectivity between our two countries. And another one is promoting uh, um, official exchanges between our two countries, that is agreement on ex exemption of visa requirement for official and diplomatic passport holders. And the third one is agreement on avoidance of double taxation which promotes the uh, to, uh, investment between our two countries so so all these three uh, agreements are very important very crucial in our violent relations so let's uh, go to um, areas of bilateral cooperation of course there are many areas of bilateral cooperation but the most, most prominent areas I have highlighted here in front of you that is economic and technical cooperation, tourism and culture, civilization, trade, investment and education and research. So I will try to summarize our bilateral relations on these areas, on this topic in the next slides. Economic and technical cooperation. Of course, Thailand is, uh, has been supporting to Nepal for many years, for many decades. 
in, in the field of human resources and capacity development. Under the goal plan and technical cooperation scheme among developing countries through TAICA, which is a developing cooperation agency of Thai government. So there are many Nepali official, government officials as well as uh, students have been graduated under this scheme in the past and even now. And uh, this is very important uh, cooperation that we are receiving from Thai government. So we expect some other areas which is very equally important that is, as you know, Thailand is very successful in modernizing its agriculture. And Nepal would like to benefit from Thailand by technology transfer in this field. Especially recently, Taiga is very Taiga, the agency which is uh, supporting us, is uh, interested to support Nepal on tea and coffee production, processing, and packaging. This is very good and very important export item of Nepal. And uh, Thailand has good expertise on this product. So that's why we are, um, we are uh, discussing on this, uh, how to get uh, benefit from Thailand in this area. So another important area is tourism and culture. It is very important in the sense that the people-to-people -people contacts is also important component of tourism and culture. The number of tourists visiting Thailand is the number of Nepali nationals visiting, Nepali tourists visiting to Thailand is much higher than Thai tourists visiting to Nepal. This is very interesting. Most of the tourists, those who visit Nepal, they go to Lumini and have a lifetime experience because of its sacred place. Because of its sacred uh, uh, place. Lumini is not only the birthplace of Gautam Buddha, but also fountain of Buddhism, which is a fact. Buddha, Buddhism, and Lumini are inseparable. As you are a scholar, you might have known that once there is the Buddhism, always connects with Buddha and Lumini. So we would like to request you to study in a joint or combined form so that people will understand about Buddha, Buddhism and Lumini. So in order to understand Buddha, it is important to understand Lumini. Lumini has growing attraction for cool pilgrims scholars, researchers, and those in pursuit of ultimate truth and salvation in this, in the recent time. There are growing interests from all over the world. Of course, Thailand is fully important, and there is a growing interest among this birthplace of Lord God the Buddha. Government has accorded top priority for the development of the so in the same line, government has the same job, has inaugurated in Lumini a multi-purpose international meditation center with capacity of 5,000 people, which was inaugurated by our right honorable prime minister on 16 May this year, last month, just last month. So this 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 shows that we have accorded high priority to development of Lumini master plan. The another uh, major event that has taken recently is our two Prime Minister, Prime Minister of Nepal and India, the Foundation Stone for the construction of the India International Center for Buddhist Culture and Heritage at, at the Lumini Monastery Dome on Buddha Purima last month. Buddha Purima is like Baisak Buddha Day on 16th of June, uh, May was the foundation expo, so which is very important uh, uh, event. In recent year, young Thai people visit Nepal not only for 
Numiri, but for adventure tourism also, which is a very new trend. And also we have our people love Thailand. They visit more. The number of Nepali, uh, as I said earlier, Nepali uh, tourists visiting Thailand is higher than Thai tourists visiting Nepal. Why? Because Thailand has beautiful coastal beaches and islands. And you have cultural heritage, which fascinates our people. So that's why every year before COVID, it was around 60,000 Nepali tourists visiting to Thailand. So over these two years, there was no exchange of visitors because of COVID, which we all know. So we expect that this COVID will not hinder our people traveling to each other's country and have the experience of unique natural and cultural heritage. So we expect the revival of exchange of visitors by the end of this year. Similarly, there is another important component that we have to promote that is cultural exchanges. Cultural exchanges is equally important to familiarize our people to each other's cultures. Because I, I have already mentioned earlier that there are many cultural similarities between our two countries. So, exchange of cultural, cultural troops or cultural uh, performances are equally important in order to strengthen our uh, this tourism and cultural relationship between our two countries. So another important area of cooperation between our two countries is civil aviation. It, is a, it has a very long, uh, long um, History, history doesn't mean that um, century, but uh, many decades. We have a um, very long uh, um, cooperation on this area, ESA, Air Service Agreement. Especially in the past, I mean, in, in before COVID, Thai Airways, International, and our Nepali, National Career Nepali Airlines, Thai Line used to fly between two capitals almost daily which was a very important uh, means of uh, connect connectivity now nepal airlines uh, now yeah, nepal airlines has already started direct flight between our two capitals and very soon high smile is also operating Direct flight between our two capitals. So, air connectivity between the cities of the two countries is significant nationally for the promotion of cultural and adventure tourism as well as enhancing people to people contacts. Government of Nepal welcomes high airlines which operate international flight to operate direct flight to these cities of Nepal. So one thing I wish uh, to mention that uh, recently Nepal government has already operated international airport that is named as Gautam Buddha International Airport. Actually it was operated since 16 June, uh, 16 May from the day of Vesha mm -hmm. So So it has already been in op commercial operation. So similarly, Nepal government has built another international airport in Pokhara, another touristic city of Nepal, and it is going to complete by the end of this year. So both two new airports have great potentiality of promoting cultural and uh, 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 cultural as well as adventure tourism between our two countries. So that's why we would like to welcome Thai airlines which operates international flight to operate their flight to these new airport also to link it so that people of both countries could benefit 
by traveling directly to each other's country, each other in, in the in cities. So these two uh, new projects, which, which one is already in operation and another one is going to operate very soon, will boost our bilateral tourism relations. So the first one is Gautam Buddha International Airport, left side. The right side is Pokhara International Airport. So the left side of airport is already in operation. And second one is almost finished. So we are expecting the operation by the end of this year. So another important uh, component of our bilateral cooperation is trade. Of course, trade is important. We have bilateral, it is the, the volume is growing, but we have a huge trade deficit or trade uh, imbalance with Thailand. Our import is much higher than our export. So that is the main reason of our trade uh, imbalance. So as LDC, Nepal receives CSP facility also from Thailand, we would like to enhance our some exportable items to Thailand in order to minimize this trade, trade imbalance. Uh, we have some, I have mentioned some uh, major exportable items which we find that it has a good market in Thailand. But uh, most importantly is market, market information, business exchange, and participation in the fairs. So these are equal importance in order to promote bilateral trade. So we are working on these promotional activities with the support of private sector. So another component of bilateral cooperation is investment. High investment in Nepal is minimal in comparison to FDI outflows to another countries. So far, only 13 projects have been registered under Thai investment. Thai investors have many profitable areas in Nepal due to many reasons, including very friendly legal system and incentive provided by the Nepal government. Hospitality manufacturing, manufacturing of uh, many types, of and herbal processing, aromatic, it means aromatic wires and other uh, medicinal uh, products, would be attractive products or business for Thai investment. So most, very important thing is Duchy International, very renowned hospitality group of Thailand, has some made have some made investment in the power in hospitality sector. We welcome high investment in those sectors in coming days. So these are the major highlights of our relations on investment sector. So let's move to another sector that is very important and related to your field also education and research. Thailand, our two countries have a very, have been cooperating for many, I have to mention their history of cooperation, their long history, but it doesn't mean that century, but decades. For many decades, we have been cooperating in the education sector. Thailand is one of the preferred destinations for Nepali students. For higher education, especially in technical field, that is engineering and medicines. There is a growing trend of Nepali students coming to Thailand in management field also in recent times. There are many possibilities of collaboration for research and academic exchanges between the university of the two countries and their affiliated institutes. Of course, students exchange is an important activity. Besides that, there would be joint research, joint um, program between two 
two universities of the two countries. South Asian Study Center under the Institute of Asian Studies, which you are representing now, could collaborate with the Nepali Institute or University for doing research on Buddhist sites of Nepal and publish their research in Thai language. I have mentioned here Buddhist sites because Nepal has many Buddhist, important Buddhist sites, not only birthplace. I mentioned Tilavra the parental hometown of Lord Gautam of Buddha. And besides that, there are other important Buddhist sites in Nepal that is called Rangram Stupa, that is around 50 55 kilometers east of Lumini, and another Devta. Uh, Rangram Stupa is, as you know, uh, it is uh, the only stupa which is believed to have uh, inside the body relics of Lord Gautam Buddha. That's why it is very sacred and the Buddhist people visit this stupa. And another um, um, important um, uh, site is Devta. Devta is uh, um, Lord Buddha's mother, Maya Devi's parental hometown. That is also a very sacred place for Buddhist people and that is also in Nepal, very near to Lumini. Besides that, in Kathmandu, if you have visited Kathmandu, you might have visited Baudhanath and Swayambhunath and Namo Buddha. All these sites are equally important for Buddhist people as well as those who follow Buddhism and who, who are interested in study Buddhism. So all these separate places are equally important. Some are in southern part, near Lumini, some are in Kathmandu Valley. But importance are equally important. Of course, birthplace is more important. So I would like to emphasize here why, because you are a research person, you are a scholar, you might have interest on Buddhism. If you are having interest, if not, you may encourage your colleagues, you may encourage your friends to study more details in depth on those Buddhist sites and highlight the significance, highlight the importance of those places and connect that with Thailand and publish it among Thai people so that they will be aware about our historical linkages. So I would like to request you also on behalf of the embassy and the representative of Nepal to study or go in in-depth research, a study on those important to the sites of Nepal. So besides uh, economic and uh, other cooperations, we have very important component of bilateral relations that is humanitarian assistance. Government of Nepal, the government and people of Thailand have always remained supportive to Nepali people during difficult times, be it in earthquake, floods, or pandemic. As you know, last year, two years ago, not two years ago, the prompt support with essential medical supplies from the royal family members as well as government and people of Thailand during COVID pandemic were highly appreciated. It was invaluable. You might have noticed it. We received such a essential items which were which were directly utilized by our people, affected people by COVID pandemic. Besides, Thai government also supported the repatriation of stranded Nepali nationals during the lockdown, which, which is very appreciated because our people were locked down because of COVID, but they were repatriated with, with the support of Thai government. So these are just highlights, very simple summary of uh, our humanitarian support that we have we received from Thailand. Thai people. So let's talk about uh, uh, in regional forum. So I just mentioned all about uh, highlights on bilateral uh, affairs.
Now I would like to move to the original forum that is Nepal and Deep State. Nepal is a strong supporter of regionalism. And uh, since the joining of Bim State, the regional body, in 2004, Nepal has been actively cooperating with other member states in realizing its objective. Bim State is the only regional forum which connects civilization and peoples of South Asia and Southeast Asia. Nepal is committed to contributing constructively towards re-energizing state process. Nepal hosted as member its fourth Bimstake summit in Kathmandu in August 2018 and many other its meetings. So recently Nepal is the lead country in the people to people sector whose sub sectors are culture, tourism and people to people contact forms. Nepal is committed to engaging with other member states and contributing towards building strong bonds at the people's level. Nepal's all scope and all the establishment and operationalization of the Buddhist circuit with Gumini. So this is very important uh, um, um, component that the, the, the the 4th Beach Summit in Kathmandu has, uh, has, uh, has been mentioned in the declaration. So recently, in the 5th, after the 5th Beach Summit, Thailand has assumed the chair of Beach Tech regional body for 2022 and 2023. So we congratulate Thailand for this chairmanship and we, we are confident that under this, under Thailand's chairmanship, Vimste will continue to grow as a dynamic organization in further strengthening cooperation among member countries. So, in summary, in summary, what I can reiterate here that the relation between our two countries are friendly cordial and cooperative which have been underpinned by the growing people's level contacts. The two countries have many potential areas for bilateral cooperation which need to further encourage private sector of both countries to tap the opportunity available in those sectors. Existing bilateral mechanism provides ample opportunities to exchange views, explore potential areas of cooperation and implement the decision taking potential value. Air connectivity of Hairaba and Pokhara with Thai cities will open new avenues for the promotion of cultural and adventure tourism. And establishment and promotion of the circuit with Lumini will further enhance cultural tourism and people-to-people -people connectivity in the region. I just mentioned these points as a summary of my presentation, which is very short, but uh, since you are very, you, have, you are a scholar and you have very deep knowledge of South Asia, you know more than me, but uh, I just dare to share with these words in front of you. Uh, because you have invited me, so I share these things, these words. I would like to thank you very much for your attention and I will be happy to entertain you if you have any queries on my presentation. With these words, I would like to thank you once again. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Excellency, for enlightening and very comprehensive presentation. Uh, you have covered uh, on different facets of political and cultural relations. You have also highlighted vital and major agreements between the two countries, uh, as well as Nepal's role in the and the potential area of collaboration between Nepal and Thailand. Uh, Excellency, now I would like to open the floor for discussion. We would like to request all our participants to raise their questions to Excellency. Uh, let me start with some that I have received during the session, maybe one, and then I will uh, request my uh, friends to raise their questions. 
like you mentioned about King Rama ninth uh, book, uh, the story of Mahajanaka, which talk about the ancient relation between Nepal and Thailand. I come from Janakpur, the kingdom of uh, Mahajanaka. Similarly, Dumri is the birthplace of Buddha, which is very important place to visit for Thai Buddhism. How can Nepal and Thailand work together for promoting Buddhist circuit and Ramayana circuit at a bilateral level or to Bimstek at regional level? Thank you, Dr. Pramod Jeshwaya, for this question. Actually, this is very important questions, and uh, this is uh, this has been uh, actually this should be the focus and attention of our bilateral two countries, and it is already in our focus because I just mentioned on, uh, on uh, my presentation that uh, the uh, operation of operation of a new airport from Rumini, Gautam Buddha International Airport is one of the milestone in promoting one, one important step of promoting um, uh, this Buddhist and the Ramayana Shaki because the, before there was no direct connectivity, air connectivity it, the visitors had to go either from uh, from, uh, from uh, Kathmandu which was not uh, very easy but uh, but now, the Nepal government has built a new international airport. So this is one step. Of course, well, our two countries are very aware and we are doing and we are working on it. And in regional forum also, this has been already mentioned. And uh, in coming days, we are working on that line. And uh, of course, it is a, it is a, a very important um, uh, fact that we we, it is a concerted effort of all sectors, of all sectors, and Nepal government is uh, is uh, ready to cooperate and ready to work to promote uh, these uh, um, important circuits, and it, that's why it has been reflected in the Wednesday declaration document. So, um, air connectivity, people to people contracts, and uh, cultural exchanges are the, I think, the main component to enhance and to promote these uh, uh, circuits. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, any of us would like to ask any questions? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you very much for uh, your presentation and very good information and content also. That's very really good. And uh, I need to ask you some questions about the similarity of the culture, language, and, and uh, just uh, traditions about the Nepali people and Thai people. What is the similarity is about some language or any point? Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Actually, similarity in culture means uh, the thing is, actually, I mentioned there yes, that yes. Buddhism, teaching of Gautam Buddha. Teaching of Gautam Buddha and the philosophy of Buddhism. The main essence, essence of Buddhism and teaching of Gautam Buddha has already inspired our life, the people of our two countries, I think. If not, uh, mostly, mostly, yeah. So, th this is inbuilt, in, 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 it is in our mind, mindset. So, that makes an engagement. Another is, uh, I mentioned that Pali and Sanskrit yes. is the language yes. which those words which are derived from them have the same meaning, same meaning, similar meaning, no changes. What you interpret that words also in the same in Nepali. We also use Sanskrit in our language. So that is the thing. And another tradition means uh, you have also society, we have also society, you have also family system, we have also family system, you have also in the family you respect family members, especially the parents, the grandparents, we have also the same system. So this shows we are we have similarity in that way also. So if, if you, that's why you see we need more research. We need more research and for that we need your support. You have to study. What, you, what are more similar? I just highlighted just the headlines. These are just headline topics. 
But uh, if you go in details, then you will find. You will find more. You will find more. That's why it is important to have a deep research on our similarities of culture, similarity of language, similarity of tradition, whatever it is. So that's why we request you to do more research. There are so many things which will uncover and which will be interesting to Thai friends, Thai people. And if it is in English or Nepali, it will be interesting for Nepali people also. So both people will benefit from that research, from your finding, from your publication. <coughs> Because uh, uh, just in India, okay. just like Nepali okay. language, yeah. like, because I, I was in India, and I meet uh, some word, just like uh, Jor, Jori in my language. Very simple, you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The place where we land yeah. in Thailand is Suvarna. Yeah. 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 Suvarna is a Sanskrit word, I think. Uh, yes. And meaning is the Suvarna. Bhumi, Swarna means gold, Bhumi means land, it is Sanskrit word. There are so many words, Kritika, Suchitra, Surya, Vishnu, Pundishnu, Deputy Prime Minister. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know? There are so many words which have a, uh, which have a similarity because of Sanskrit words. So and you have to do more research. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, in the meantime, let me like uh, come with one more question. Like, since you mentioned that Thailand has more of technology for agriculture and its backbone of Nepal's economy as well, the majority of Nepal are engaged in agriculture. Are there any engagements between the two countries uh, where Nepal can benefit? Is Nepal willing to explore areas of cooperation in the agriculture sector? And maybe we'll take one more question uh, because we're running out of time. คือทางไทยเราไปเที่ยวเชิงจิตวิญญาณที่ประเทศในมาและในทางต่างกันมันมีมุมมองเกี่ยวกับทางจิตวิญญาณทางพุทธศาสนาจากไทยไปสู่เนปาลไหมหรือมีเรื่องเล่าหรือมีเรื่องเล่าในด้านความเชื่อในปากการไหมทีนี้ทำอย่างนี้เราเราเราไม่เยอะเลยแต่ผมผมพูดเป็นไทยเนาะคือมองมุมมองอะนี่นักนักเคมีเรียกสาตรงตรงอันนี้คำว่าไม่มาเชื่อแล้วไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่ไม่เราน่าจะมีความร่วมมือเนาะในจุฬาของท่านเขามีโครงการของคุณโยเองนะคะเขาให้คำลักษณะนี้เป็น culture เป็น tourism หลายประเทศมาจอยกันนะคะของ U U N ฟอนนะคะมีทุกปีเลยซึ่งลักษณะที่ท่านพูดยังหมายถึงว่าเรามีความเชื่อด้าน culture tradition อย่างที่เนี่ยชื่อสุวรรณาสุวรรณามาจากสันสกฤตค่ะใช่สุวรรณาคือสันสกฤตอย่างนี้ค่ะเราเราสามารถที่มาจอยหาหาลากฐานหาลากของมันนะคะมาทำเป็นโปรเจกต์ลักษณะที่ท่านมีส่วนร่วมภายจุฬาอะไรอย่างเงี้ยหลายหลายมหาลัยอย่างมหาลัยที่รัฐมงคลเจ้าเป็นเนื้อตาสวรรค์ยาสามารถกดแข่งได้อย่างเงี้ยค่ะที่ว่ามันจะเป็นอะไรที่มันมันมันอลังการมากมากเลยค่ะไอ้ talk about the UN one like like the meter for the all the country in in Asia, uh, doing in the cultural tradition something like that, you know. She she would like to know about like uh, uh, when like for example we from Thailand to uh, to take a trip in Nepal about spiritual Buddhism you get my point Buddhism yeah. but about the spiritual 
uh, adventure tourism means uh, means all activities related to nature with geography with uh, the natural say, uh, natural gift yeah, whatever it is in the nature that all relates so we have plenty of activities on adventure tourism or uh, you know climbing mount everest or himalaya any other peaks we have more than um, we have uh, in, in the world there are 40 uh, mountains above 8000 meters and 8 are in Nepal 8 are in, located in Nepal so Nepal is popular that's why it's for mountain climbing every year thousands of people climb in different mountains and we have jungle safari have you have you heard uh, about the uh, jungle safari in Nepal, which is, uh, which is very close to Chitwan and uh, uh, Lumini, that is called Chitwan, and it is in World Heritage List, UNESCO World Heritage. And it is the uh, uh, national park which, which where we can, you can see the live rhino moving here and there, moving, just roaming. You could see riding on the elephant, you can see the live rhino. So we have such a unique uh, jungle safari experience. So we are highlighting that, of course. And also we have water rafting. We have very high current water river. And in that river, you will have a unique experience of our white water rafting. This is unique because of our topography. We have very good rivers, which provides services or which gives the experience for the visitors very unique experience of uh, water rafting. So all these activities, jungle safari, I mean, uh, uh, trekking. Have you ever heard Annapurna base camp or Everest base camp? Mm -hmm. These are popular route for trekking. Mm -hmm. Of course, Annapurna Everest base camp is popular for climbing Mount Everest, Sagarmatha. Yeah. But besides that, it is popular for trekking also. A very world famous trekking route. And no more base camp, ABC. Average um, base camp. That another. So there are many other destinations or sites where you will find adventure tourism experience. So, so all these places are equally attractive for young people, not only from here, but all over the world. We have one quick question to follow up on the tourism. Uh, one thing that I found in common between in 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 this state is not tea plantation. Tea plantation. Yeah, that's tea plantation that can link from Sri Lanka, north of India, and Nepal, and also north of Thailand as well. So, what do you think about the the development of the tea group experience link between this state and how this? Is there any opportunity to develop on tea plantation experience in Nepal? Tea package. Tea package. Oh. Tea plantation. 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 Okay. Plantation. Linkage. I'm I'm not expert on that uh, how to connect it. But what I can say, what I can say to you that Nepali tea plants are young plant in comparison to other countries plant. And our plants are young and it has a good flavor because of young and it has a good, uh, um, people say, tea lovers say that our tea are one of the best uh, tea in the world. That's why our tea has market in Europe, in Europe, America, in Japan, in China, in, even in neighboring countries, India, so everywhere. So it has a good market. And production is also very large, mm -hmm. so we are exporting, and we want to more receive, modernize it, and more we cultivate and product produce tea. And another important component is coffee. Actually, coffee is we have very young plants, and coffee is has also great potentiality to produce in Nepal because of topography. You know, if you have in that line, then you might have known that coffee is grown to certain level of high altitude. Yeah? It is not in lowland product. So we have plenty of 
highland uh, uh, area where coffee, where coffee can be grown. So both items are very good uh, and good and uh, uh, great potentiality of producing Nepal. But tea has we already large quantity of tea we produce, but coffee we have we are growing. Every year we are growing more and more, but it has not been to the level of our capacity. That's why we want to modernize, we want to get some technical technology transfer on this area so that we can go more. So coffee is also equally important and growing market. Even in Nepal, coffee has good market. Young people they prefer coffee, but tea we have a very much and surplus, so that's why we export in many countries. So, uh, so about the linkage, I could not say right now. The main difference is our plants are low, and it has a good flavor according to tea export tea law. So, uh, can can uh, Nepal develop the tea? in that area to be like a tourist destination for the tourists to visit the plants and enjoy tea, learn about tea, real tea? Yes, of course. Uh, the eastern part of Nepal is very popular uh, destination for tea producing, uh, uh, tea plantation and uh, very lovely. As you said that the tea, tea gardens are very lovely to visit. Um, and it has very unique uh, scene, natural scene, greenery. Yeah? From all aspects, it looks very beautiful. So we have uh, such a plenty of uh, you see, land covered by tea plantation, tea plants. And um, but coffee is uh, mainly produced in western part of Nepal. Uh, that is uh, Gulmi area, Gulmi district. So uh, both plants have a uh, different. Uh, sites for uh, 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 production but the thing is we are we have good package but we want to modernize more oh yeah so that that is why it's, especially the plantation and uh, processing is important packaging is a little bit uh, art also it has uh, some linkage with the art but plantation and uh, processing has uh, needs technology so that's why we focus on and we are discussing and we are having good response from high government. Yeah. Thank you. Can you take one more question? One question maybe we, uh, I would like to approach to the uh, political issue a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah, from, <laughs> from, from the uh, economic and tourism perspective. So as we know that Nepal is the, in the between the superpower crop in the region, China and, and India as well. So how they can keep balance of power. As you say that uh, Japan is very strong support for regional cooperation. Is this like you know the game state? Is it the way out for Nepal to make the uh, Nepal more uh, 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 of, uh, stronger? Yeah, like so it means that how Nepal could be uh, then for yeah, thank, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, we, we are in meeting China and India. Do you have a maybe that is a No, no, it's okay. It's okay, no problem. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, we have excellent relationship with both countries, with both our neighbors. From our history, we have a really good relationship. We have a uh, uh, balanced relationship. And uh, the, the balance, yeah. So we have a very um, excellent relationship with both countries, and we have been maintaining balance with both countries. And regional uh, forum is another forum, and uh, there are two regional forums: South Asia and uh, is one and another is SAR. So the, we are member of both uh, regional uh, organizations. So the thing is. Uh, you said how I said that we have excellent and we have been maintaining balance with this. So balance is very important. And we have always excellent relations, not only one time, but all, all the time throughout our history. <coughs> so, can we end it here? Can we end it here?
Yes. The last question for the Actually, I saw you in Thailand. I mean, just like Bengali community in Thailand, it is the north part of Thailand, in Chiang All the two main people in Thailand have invited to come to me, or in my area, in my university. And maybe Pahan also, the community. Actually, I, I, I would like to know about the neighborhood community inside there, or some neighborhood village there, or stay inside there, that's right. Do you have any information for me? Yeah, we do have um, some neighborhood community yes. uh, here. Uh, and we are here, I think, uh, uh, from Myanmar also. Yeah, from Myanmar also. Uh, basically from Myanmar, uh, and uh, that community is very large. That community is very large, and uh, they are basically concentrated uh, in Bangkok, and uh, Phuket, and in Pattaya, and some in in uh, in, uh, in uh, China. We have community. That community we estimate around 60,000 to 70,000. This is just estimate, not a real figure. But that is uh, from Nepali origin. Yeah. Not Nepali passport to uh, hold it, but the Nepali mm -hmm. So, so the Thai people with Nepali origin? Sorry? Thai, Thai people with Nepali origin? Yeah, some Thai and some uh, Myanmar, yeah, it depends on the people, but that community is very big. Supermania, do you have any questions? No, no. Okay. no okay. So, here we come to the end of the discussion. Uh, since you have touched upon, you have uh, said one very interesting proposition that kind of South is uh, South is study center of development university, and maybe some institutes or some universities of Nepal can collaborate to produce Buddhist sites of Nepali Thailand. I think similarly, maybe Nepal University and the South is study center can also produce a handbook on investment on Nepal uh, in Thailand, so that it can attract more Thai investors. In Maybe we can explore those things in the days to come. Um, here we come to the end of the program. May I now invite Director of South Business Studies, Dr. Dirayud Sindhu Khan, to present the token of law to our guest, His Excellency Ganesh Prasad Dhakal, Nepali Ambassador.